It isn't very often that we get to revisit a 3D printer on this channel. I've only done it a handful of times over the years, with the most recent being the Ender 3, which was after two and a half years of me using that printer. And the main reason really is just other video projects I'm working on. I've got this list of videos that I've been wanting to make, or that I want to make, and it's often growing a lot faster than it is shrinking. And it's a really good problem to have with the only trade-off being that it makes it a lot more difficult for me to revisit existing machines or to go over topics again that we've once already covered. Well, today we're gonna make an exception to that rule and for good reason. Five months ago, I reviewed the Creality Hallet 1, which was their newest resin 3D printer on the market. And summarizing that video, I pretty much said that the hardware to me was impressive, but the firmware seemed like it needed work and the slicer was incredibly buggy. So at the time, I just couldn't recommend that machine. And if you haven't watched that review, I'll place links down below in the description so you can check it out sort of as a preface to this video. Well, over the last few months with all of the sales that have been going on and just people looking into getting into resin 3D printing, I've had a lot of viewers reach out letting me know that, hey, it looks like Creality has updated both the firmware as well as the slicer situation of the Hallet 1. Is there any way that you can revisit this and see what the Hallet 1's all about now? And so I did. I got a chance to actually update the firmware, check out the new slicers, and Wow, it, it is probably the biggest 180 I've ever seen a 3D printer or manufacturer do to a 3D printer. And the Hallet 1 that I'm testing out or that I tested out today might be the same physically, but the experience is completely different. So in today's video, we're going to go over all the critiques that I had of the machine back when I initially reviewed it, how they've been addressed, and ultimately decide whether the Hallet 1 is a resin 3D printer that you should consider, whether you're looking to get your first 3D printer, or if you're looking to add an additional machine to your lineup. So there is definitely going to be quite a bit to cover, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Soriatech. Their resins have been incredibly consistent and easy to use on a wide range of printers that I've tested them on, which is why they have been my go-to resin manufacturer for the past couple of years. Another huge plus is that they are some of the lowest odor resins I've used, which is very important to me given the fairly small space I'm working in. Their fast line of resins is great for everyday model printing, and they've been pushing the bar with a wide range of engineering resins, like their high strength, flexible, castable, and their sculpt line for high temp parts. I'll place links in the description to our resin playlist if you'd like to take a further look into some of the resins that we've tested out on this channel, as well as a link to their store so that you can try them out for yourself. Before we jump into my list of critiques, I did want to touch on the things that I did like about the Hallet 1 when I initially reviewed it. And the first is that it does have a monochrome 2K screen. And I've touched on the fact that a screen of this size going from a 2K to a 4K, the actual resolution or the print quality that you'll see in front of you without using some sort of a microscope is really, really damn good and very, very comparable. So I did like that it had at least a monochrome screen with a 2K resolution. Also, it has a built-in carbon filter, which is something that I personally am a huge fan of. I try to use the lowest odor resins as possible, but being that I am in a small confined space, having a carbon filter is definitely a major plus to me. Also, the big touchscreen on it has the nicest resolution and the most responsive menu system that I've seen on any resin 3D printer that I've used to date. For anybody that is trying to get out of the Chitu systems or Chitu boards due to the whole lock-in thing that's been going on, well, you'll be happy to know that the Hallet 1 is not using a Chitu board. Lastly, and I wish that I'd covered this a bit more in the initial review because I don't think that I highlighted it nearly enough, but this machine does something very unique in that all of your layer cure times or your burn-in times, so choosing how many layers you want the burn-in layers to be, how long you want them as far as the cure time to be, as well as all of your additional layers, they're actually set on the machine itself. And I don't think I realized how powerful that is, but what that basically means is if you slice a bunch of files and you had sliced them for one particular resin and then you switch over to another resin, well, in normal resin 3D printers, you'd have to re-slice all of them for that new resin. Well, on the Hallet 1, because it does it on a machine level instead of on a file level, you just adjust the new resin parameters on the printer itself, and all of your sliced files can now be used with any resin because you just 
adjust those couple of settings. So it is really powerful. I've never seen another resin uh, 3D printer do that. And so again, I, I wish I'd highlighted that more because that truly is something that I feel is innovative that Creality is doing with their Hallet One ecosystem or with the Hallet ecosystem. Now for the critiques, because there was a lot of them. And the first was with the slicer. It doesn't matter how good your hardware is if the firmware or the slicer does not does not work or does not work well. And this printer, when it came out, was only compatible with their Hallet Box, I believe that's what it's called, the Hallet Box Slicer. And it was buggy. I tested it out. When I originally got the machine, it came with Alpha. Then they had a beta download. And no matter what I did, when I added supports to a model, it would lift it off of the build plate, causing each and every single print to fail, which of course is a huge problem. You couldn't actually use a slicer. So the workaround I discussed in the video back then was to do all of my rotating, my hollowing, my scaling in Chitu Box, exporting the STL from there into the Hallet Box slicer, then just using that to slice it and then transfer it to the printer, which sure is something you can do. And maybe it's not that big of a deal to everyone, but it's certainly inconvenient and sort of a workaround that you shouldn't have to do. Fast forward to today and the Windows version of their slicer is no longer in alpha, it's no longer in beta and they fixed the bug. So you can actually use their slicer and they've definitely made a lot of improvements. I still don't think it's quite on par with something like Chitu Box or Lychee Slicer, but hey, it does work and for somebody getting into resin 3D printing, I would say there are more than enough options to get the job done. On top of that, they also fix the Wi-Fi. So when you slice a file, if your Hallet One is connected to your local network, you can send the job directly from the slicer over to the printer, which to me is also a very cool feature. And if that's not good enough, they actually did work with the Lychee team. And so Hallet, the Hallet One, all of the Hallet printers, as far as I can see, are now baked into the Lychee slicer. So if you wanna use Lychee, you can go ahead and do all of your your model set up in there, slice it and export it from there. So you don't have to use the Creality software if you just decide that it's not for you, which having options to me is always a good thing. Also at the time, they didn't have a Mac version of their software, which to me was a problem because I use a Mac mini and a MacBook Pro for editing on the go. And I do have a Windows PC, but that's primarily my streaming setup. So I was pretty bummed out considering at the time I couldn't use Lychee or Chitu that I had to use the Windows PC. Well. They did release their software in a Mac version. It is in beta. However, I did do a bit of slicing and playing around with it, and it seems like it works fairly well, and I was able to wirelessly transfer a, uh, a print from the Mac over to the Hallet One, which was rad. So again, they are definitely working on and improving the slicer, and I'm happy to see uh, Mac support. As far as the firmware goes, they did have a one or two major firmware updates, and I already thought that the interface was really, really good, but with one of the firmware updates, it completely overhauled the whole user interface, and I thought it was really good before, but damn, is it impressive now. And they even have themes, like I think a standard theme and like a bright colorful theme, and I've been using the colorful theme, but they both look great, and I, I think they did an amazing job with the overall UI of the Hallet One. Now, one of the biggest issues I had with the firmware initially was when you went and paused a print, which I often do if I'm testing out a new machine or a new filament, I don't wanna to wait to see the bed go all the way up to, to, to realize that, oh, hey, my settings were incorrect or you know my adhesion wasn't that good or the print failed. And so originally when you paused the machine, it would pause, but nothing else would happen. It wouldn't raise out of the vat, which to me is kind of worthless. I didn't understand it. And I saw in a firmware update that they released, I think a month or so ago, that there was a little excerpt about fixed the pause bed where the bed lifts now. And what do you know? Now, when you pause a print, it does what it should have done all along and it raises out of the vat. So you can see whether your print is still sticking. And I don't know whether my strongly worded email to them five months ago or the video that I created five months ago was the reason that they did that, but I'd like to think that it played at least a small role in them implementing that into their firmware, which again, should have been there from the beginning, but I am very, very happy that they finally listened and they did add that to the firmware. Lastly, they advertise compatibility with the Creality Cloud app. And this is probably, or was the least of my critiques on my list of critiques because I just don't foresee myself using the app all that often. However, I do think that if a company does advertise a feature, then if not for myself, for anybody that is interested, well, it should it should have that feature or that feature should work. And at the time when I tried using the Creality app with the Hallet One, there was just an issue with pairing and it, and it didn't work. Well, 
That has since been fixed, and it was as easy as me opening up the Creality app, clicking the ad printer, scanning the generated QR code on the Hallet one, which then paired the two together. And from the app, I was able to browse the thousands of models that users have uploaded. There's probably a lot more than that, but all the different models people have uploaded, find a Mickey Santa Claus, grab that model, scale that model, rotate that model, add supports, send it to the printer, and then go over to the printer hours later to a complete model, all from their app. Now, is their app perfect? No, there's definitely some things that can be improved upon. The most notable one that I saw right away was when I was trying to rotate the Mickey, the sort of pop out menu for rotating the different axes makes it really awkward to see where your model is on the build plate or to get a good view of it, which is something that they can easily fix. But the bottom line is I was able to do everything from grabbing the model to getting the finished model off of the build plate all from inside of the app, which to me is pretty damn awesome. Now, like I stated, I don't think I will really be using the app all that much just because I like having very high precision control of the 3D prints that I send to my printers, just having a bigger screen, having all the additional settings of something like the lychee slicer to me is very important. However, anytime we are making 3D printing more accessible to someone that might find it nice or convenient to use the app, whether it's with a kid or, you know, whatever the situation is, I'm all about that. When I look at the Hallet one today, I feel like it's finally in a place that maybe Creality had envisioned from the beginning. And it just unfortunate it had to take this long to get there. I, I still really cannot believe that the experience I had five months ago and the experience I'm having today is from the exact same machine with just a firmware update. And again, more slicer compatibility and slicer features added to their slicer. And after I tested out the firmware, I tested out the slicers, I hopped over to my computer and I actually sent Creality off an email and I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but in the email I said, hey, all the stuff I said about the Hallet one five months ago still stands true, but the machine today is a very different machine. Please give the team that's working on this a serious thumbs up because the progress they have made is substantial. And I often try to give manufacturers feedback if they don't see it in the video itself, I'll try to send them an email. I did the same thing with Creality a couple weeks ago with the Sermoon, but instead of me saying positive things, it was me digging into their machine. But I do again like to try to give manufacturers the feedback based off my experience. I would like to think that companies take the feedback into consideration and the Hallet one definitely gives me hope that that is actually the case. But on, on top of giving them positive feedback for the progress they've made on this, I did also let them know that, hey, you guys should really consider not pushing out machines before you feel like they're actually ready to go because the experience I had with the Hallet one five months ago felt like a really half-baked machine. And the thing that I am not okay with is that at the time that I was reviewing that machine, you know, there was no uh, noticed to me that, hey, this is a beta unit or anything like that. And it really wasn't because customers were buying it and they were shipping them to customers. And I know Angus and Joel have covered this before, but I don't have any desire to be a beta tester primarily because it doesn't do anything for you, the audience, because my experience with whatever beta machine I have and whatever I relay to you is going to be substantially different than what your experience is going to be. And it's the same thing that I don't really like doing Kickstarter pre-releases because the retail version often has a lot of changes. And again, what's the point of me covering something that you're going to get and it's going to be a completely different unit. This was a rare instance. And again, the only reason I decided to revisit this was just the sheer amount of messages and emails and comments I got from various people interested in the Hallet one that really wanted to know, hey, is it still the same machine that you were digging into five months ago? Or did Creality do all these things and is it a very solid machine now? Most manufacturers that I get a machine from and it gets a subpar review, that is what it's getting from me. And anyone that asks me about it, that is what I'm going to refer them to. So I really hope that manufacturers start to see that it is actually not beneficial for them to release a subpar product and send it to somebody that's going to be reviewing it because it could really hurt the machine. And instead, had they just watered this, you know, this plant a little bit more, it grew into something that is absolutely insane. And you know, five months ago, would I have recommended the Hallet one? Absolutely not. There was a lot of better options. Today, at around 200 ish dollars, if somebody asks me, is the Hallet one a solid option? I would say absolutely. From the specs on it to just some of the features that I had described in this with the carbon filter to me is awesome. The ability to adjust the settings from the printer is awesome. Wireless connectivity is awesome. The, the I mean, <laughs> the UI is awesome. It, it's just, 
Again, a night and day difference. And that is the Hallett One in the state of, you know, December of 2021, a completely different machine. And if you are looking to add a machine to your lineup or looking to get a first time machine and you're able to find this thing on sale, I would absolutely say that the experience on this is second to none compared to a lot of the other machines that I've tested out. If you have any questions at all about anything that I covered, whether it was in the first video that maybe I didn't address in this video or from this video, let me know in the comments down below. And if there's something I don't have the answer to, as you can tell, I have no problem reaching out to the manufacturer and trying to get that answer for you. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of my existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you, allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.